good to see everybody's face, face to face. In the house of the Lord, one more time. Hallelujah. Yea, God. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the house of the living God. God's not dead. We need to act like it. He's yet alive in us. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this mic to one of these young folk. will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold that keepeth israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the lord is thy keeper and the lord is thy shade upon thy right hand the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall pres preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Good morning, church. Bow your heads. Lord, thank you for waking up just up this morning. Let us start on our way to come to church today. You are almighty and you are awesome, God. Lord, just help us and keep on loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every praise is to our God. All right, join in, everybody. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Thank you. Hallelujah. To our God, 
Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God's my Savior. God's my healer. God's my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God's my Savior. God's my healer. God's my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship worth one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God's my Savior. God's my healer, God's my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is, God's my savior, God's my healer, God's my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, he is worthy, Jesus is worthy, he's worthy to be praised in the morning, let's pray. Midnight, I will pray. Noonday, I will praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him, Jesus. Jesus, blessed Savior. He is worthy to be praised. Would you remain standing for the call to worship? Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a no great noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving 
and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. May we pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, who knows all things, can do all things, who looks down upon us and help us every day. Oh, God, help us to do your will, to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. Bless our service today. Oh, God, may you be pleased with our praise. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Go with those who couldn't make it today. Oh, God, have mercy on them. Give them another chance so that they may come to worship you. Oh, God, go with the pastor who's going to bring the message. Oh, God, be with him and speak to him and help us to listen with a grateful heart. These blessings I ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. 100 Psalms, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. What about you? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. All in my home, I'm gonna let it shine, oh, all in my home, I'm gonna let it shine, all in my home, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, no. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. All in my school, I'm gonna let it shine, oh. All in my school, I'm gonna let it shine. All in my school, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, oh yeah. All in my home, I'm gonna let it shine, no. Oh, all in my home, I'm gonna let it shine. All in my home, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, no, oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. oh yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. 
let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. The youth talk today is take one day at a time. Sufficient. My scripture is Matthew 6.34, which takes states. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This present day has trouble enough attending it. We need not accumulate burdens by anticipating our trouble, nor borrow perplexity from tomorrow's evil to add to those of this day. It is uncertain what tomorrow's evil may be, but whatever they be, it is time enough to take thought about them when they come. What a lack of good sense it is to take that trouble upon ourselves this day by care and fear, which belongs to another day and will never be the lighter when it comes. Let us not pull upon ourselves all together at once, which providence has wisely ordered to be borne by portions. The conclusion of this whole matter then is, it is the will and command of the Lord Jesus that his disciples should not be their own tormentors, not make their passage through this world more dark and unpleasant by their apprehension of trouble, then God has made it by the troubles themselves. By our daily prayers, we may get strength to bear up under our daily troubles and to arm us against the temptation that attend them. And then let none of these things move us. Thank you. I don't know what you've come to do today. To look at me? Well, hello, here I am. <laughs> Glory to God. But I came to magnify. I came to glorify and lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. So we lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands and give you the praise. Come on, let's praise the Lord, saints. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, come and Messiah, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We clap our hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands to give you the glory. We clap our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, 
we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, come in Messiah, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. I stump my feet in the sanctuary. I stump my feet to give you the glory. I stump my feet to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Jesus, Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel. We lift up your name, Heavenly Father, come and Messiah, and we will praise you for the rest of our days, yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. I clap my hands in the sanctuary, I clap my hands to give you the glory. I clap my hands to give you the praise, and we will praise you for the rest of our days, yes, and we will praise you for the rest of our days, yes. Glory to God. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, it is to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, it is. There is power. In the, name in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army. 
There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. I hear the chains fall. I hear the chains falling. 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 There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jesus, oh yes it is, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Just one standard of praise him. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, everybody, praise him, Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's so worthy to be praised, come on and praise him, he's so worthy, praise him. Only true and living God, yeah. Praise him. And awesome God. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. So worthy. Worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun. Unto the going down. Of the same, he is worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's so worthy to be praised. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise. Come on, praise him. Come on and praise him. Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Well, praise him then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless your name, God. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. I lift my hands in the sanctuary, God. Lift my hands to give you the praise. For you are God, and beside you there is none other. Hallelujah. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord today. I've already done the um, youth talk. So I guess it's time for mission offering. Oh, altar prayer, I'm sorry. All those that would desire prayer, please come forward to the altar. Glory. Pray for me. Mm -hmm. Pray. Pray for me. Brother, pray 
pray for me. Me. And when we're at the altar, before you with bowed heads and humble hearts. Oh, God, just thanking you for another chance to serve you and praise your holy name. Bless each one of us. You know all about us. You know us better than we know ourselves. Oh, God, please help us to do what you would have us to do and to speak what you would have us to speak. Oh, God, we thank you for every day you give us on this side of the Amen. You may be seated. It's offering time. It's offering time. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Let us stand. Let us stand. Father, we thank you for gifts and givers. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Forever. Let us follow the direction of our ushers and bring our gifts to God. And ever for all you've done, you've done for me. All you've done for me, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, done for me. All you've done for me, blessings and glory and honor, they 
all belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all that you've done. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you. God, thank you for the people who have give, given to us this month. We bless them in the dear name of your family and allow them to have good days. Hello. For me. Are you done for me? Blessings and glory and honor. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like. Reaches to me. You are my hope. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. In the fullness. Of your grace in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up, you are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other reaches to me, reaches to me in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me up, you lift me up. My hope, hope like no other, hope like no other, reaches to me, reaches to me in the fullness of your grace, in the power.
strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, reaches to me, and it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley, oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose, it will never lose, it will never lose its power. Good morning. Uh, so for announcements, the Giving Tree, please can everyone who takes a bag return a gift wrapped by November 26th. Oh, thanks. This is next week. The Christmas party will be December 3rd at the Youth Center, at center after service. Sloppy Joe's homemade mac and cheese, snacks, cookies, games for kids. Those are the things that we will have. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Father, allow my words to be spoken and only your word be heard. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Thessalonians. If you don't mind standing for the reading of God's holy word. Chapter 1. say thank you to all who receive my text messages I try to send them out daily and I know if the word for you today is already printed but sometimes I want you to hear from my own heart some of the nuggets that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and one of the things I would say sister Beverly is that if my grandmother gave me a Bible before she transitioned I said grandma I got my own Bible says, no, this Bible was given to me by my father. And I want you to see the little notes and marks of what God's been through. At first, I said, I got my own Bible. But then I looked at the front of it and it said 1900. I grabbed that Bible real quick. Because I need something that's been tested so it can be tried. Second Samuel, Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. It's about all I can handle today. It says, wherefore, also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy. Say worthy. worthy. Dr. Perry, he says, I'm praying that God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power purpose Paul his prophet say if you hear see that be meaning coach that I said all that for this reason I'm praying for you that you be counted worthy of this calling and then he says all those good things that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ 
may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord on today. For a little while today, I want to teach <clears throat> from this particular subject, Lord, count me worthy. Lord, count me worthy. Oh, what, Kwame Austin, of giving God glory. I want God and the end of my journey, Sister Jerry, Brother Jerry, Christine, to count me worthy of giving God glory. I read for you the King James Version of God's Holy Word, and it has a picture for our thumbnail of a group of people lifting up holy hands, giving God glory. Yesterday, Skylar and I were at the state championship game in Lakeland. And I guess that's why I'm a little down because we drove, no, no, we rode on the, on, the, on the bus. They call it the fan bus. We went up happy gated, but we came back wet and sad. We were tied up with 60 seconds left in halftime. We came back from 20 to 30. Tied up. The quarterback number 17, I don't know his name, but I see his fan. In less than 60 seconds, he scored a touchdown. And then after halftime, it was a rain delay. And I ain't had no umbrella. Just got the baby's hair done because he got a 4 o'clock program. And I ain't want to go down there and they say your career done fell off. So I got the baby hair done. You know, I had to do it. I ain't got no excuse. And it's raining. I don't have no umbrella. But there was a member, amen, a member gave us an umbrella, amen. Come see, see, baby, she said, you ain't going to be up here testing the line. You better testify. Somebody gave us an umbrella. <laughs> because I sure enough text the school and say, where is the bus? They say, the bus driver is asleep. So we got to stay out there in the rain. So we were all huddled up at Lakewood Stadium inside of one of them little bathrooms. We were in the bathroom. We was in the alleyway, and it kind of slowed down. And when I had the small umbrella, they said, Pastor Austin, um, use our umbrella. Skyl and I stayed there to watch the rest of the game. We got down to the final play, and they gave it to our best player, DJ Wendell. But we came up short. I can't hate, I can't hate, because DJ scored probably three or four of the touchdowns that we already had, so we came up short, and this was the first time we've been in the championship game since 1999. So we didn't win this year, but next year, we know what to do to get back there. Come on, let's give God glory. open up that way to say I went to the game to watch Skylar School play a championship game. I was praying that I could go to the game, didn't know which vehicle I was going to drive and all that good stuff. And the Lord said, you can ride the fan bus. Skylar said, this seems like the airplane. It's got the bathroom in the back, TV right here, a little place for your cell phone charger. I mean, it was a nice bus. And when we got ready to leave, she said, Kwame, that's what they call me at the school, Kwame, would you pray for us? Would you lead us in prayer? And I prayed for the driver. I prayed for the sovereignty of God to give him glory. But I also prayed that God would give us a David spirit <laughs> as he fought Goliath, that the Lord will take over. I said that to say that I thought I was just going to be a fan, but I was truly there for the baby. And I had to play my position. You know, in this passage of scripture, Paul was called on to pray for the believers of Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Um, I like Monday Manor because in Monday Manor, y'all find that sometimes I mispronounce some of the Bible words. Uh, we were looking at the book called, uh, Brother Boy, it was called Philemon. But I kept calling it Philemon. And they say, what book are you talking about? <laughs> so I believe this is the believers of Thessalonica, and we call it Thessalonia. They were going through what we call apostasy, a great falling away of the faith 
because of her teaching. That people were walking away from the local church venture because of her teaching. Paul is saying in this passage of scripture, I'm praying that you will not fall away, but you'll get stronger and you'll be counted worthy of your calling. If I had energy to got home at 4 a.m. and I stayed up because my tradition, I try to give Sister Barnes an outline of where I'm trying to go. And so Skylar went on to sleep, but I just stayed on up because to get here from 8 something to teach, you got to leave for a lot of about 7 something. And so I've been up. And so, but I did get the rest on the way back. Um, but I thought about that thing. Many times we need to pray for believers today. Gabriel, because people are falling away from the faith. They say to us, Dr. Perry, I love Jesus, but I don't like the church. But Sister Beverly, everything in the New Testament, these 27 books of the New Testament, majority of them are written to churches. Roman, the, the believers in Rome, the believers at Corinth, the believers at Ephesus, believers in, in Galatia, believers in, you know what I'm saying? He's writing to churches. And then when he writes to Titus and Timothy, he's writing to young pastors to keep the work of the church going. So if Christ died for the church, how are you going to say I'm going to give up on the church but love Jesus? It don't work that way. And so he's praying that you be counted worthy of the calling. My three points to the poem is, number one, you got to answer the call. you got to complete your assignment. And then everything, all the things you do are counted worthy under God. See, our problem is we only think church stuff is counted. Before I got off the bus last night, I don't know how it works in St. Lucie schools, but there in, in, in Scholar School, the lower school and the upper school got like a secretary that calls me for a job. So they'll text me and they'll say, okay, Mr. Austin, I need you on this day. I mean, I already got something for 26, I think, of January. Oh, you just have something like that? Yeah, it's free. It's free. Yeah, it's cool. But when I got off the bus, she said, good job today. She said, Ms. Ella, I had my khakis on. I ain't wear the cut-up jeans with the knees out, act like I've been praying all night. I, I ain't wear them jeans. I had the khakis on and the button-up and the school um. You know, you got to be logo down and that thing. And I brought my little staff badge just in case something jumps off. They know. <laughs> just know. I'm not just brother man with a little girl, but I am official. Because <laughs> they told me, they said, if things go well, you can walk out on the street. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I realized that she says, good job, brother Moore. And know what that meant? She was observing everything I did. Because you got to be faithful with a few things before they make you rule of a minute. And God is saying the same thing for you and I. He's watching you and I. Not just in church, but just that if you can sing to the glory of God, you got to lead your friends in the cafeteria to say, we ain't going to be rapping, we ain't going to be cutting the food, we ain't going to be twerking on TikTok, but we going to give God the glory. Because the same anointing that's on y'all up in this choir stand can be used in your school. You can transform the atmosphere. God is counting everything to be worthy unto him. So you got to answer the call. My call and your call may be different, but you better answer the call. And if you answer the call, you complete your assignment. Last week, I text Dr. Perry. I said, man, we got Dr. Alveda King. As our chapel speaker. That's what I said. That's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece. Her daddy was A.B. King. And then I Googled him, like all of us do who really don't know our history. And A.B. King was also a Baptist preacher. Pastor, his first church was in Noonan, Georgia. I said, well, we used to beat them in the sport. Noonan, Georgia, then went to Alabama. I believe he died at 38 talking about a swimming accident and he was a professional swimmer and there was no water in his lungs. <laughs> so, 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 he died at 38 and he was elected in his final years to be co-pastor of Ebenezer, just like his brother Martin. Huh? So, so, so both of them were assisting the father in ministry. 
Shimeo was more academic, and, and his brother A.D. said he was behind the scene, but still was faithful to his call. And so she came down for chapel, and I think she's about 78, 73, she's up there. And so when you're up there like that, they don't have you stand behind the book board like this. They have two chairs out there like you're on TBN, and you just kind of just talk your lesson. And she gave so many good nuggets. But the point I got to say about her lesson is she told them that everything you do, give God glory and praise. She said, my daddy used a pulpit to preach. She said, but my granddaughter used TikTok as her platform to give God glory. Use whatever platform God has given you to give God glory because it's all counting. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. And so I told the office, thank you for bringing Dr. Albie the King. Because a boy from Georgia by way of Carolina made me feel good to see somebody look like me. And she showed up, said that she said, why we have so much differences in races? She shook Dr. Joel's hand and she said, turn it over. She said, your complexion and my complexion is about the same. Because she kind of looked like Coretta, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then she quoted a scripture from the book of Acts that said we all come from one blood. It's called human race. Boy, she landed that thing. So as we look at this epistle today, and I promise not to hold you long, it says that three purposes are evident from the contents of this epistle, meaning letter. Paul wrote to encourage, say encourage. He wanted to encourage Thessalonian believers to continue to persevere in the face of continuous persecution. See, the reality is, is that in this life you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for Jesus says, I will overcome. Job says, count all joy when you encounter various trials and tribulations. He says, count all joy. So it, it teaches us that we're going to have to endure persecution. But then he also, Sister Beverly came to not only just encourage, but he also wanted to clarify some, in chronological order the day of the Lord to dispel false teaching. And then he wanted to deal with laziness in the church. <laughs> He wanted to encourage some folk, clarify a few things that he said in 1 Thessalonians, and then he had to check some folk for being lazy in the church. That's where we get the scripture that says, if you don't, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Uh, you know, I tell people all the time, Boy Scouts taught me that you can't sit by a fire if you don't bring no wood to the fire. Because your job is to keep the fire going. And we got a lot of folk receiving from God but not working for God. And so Paul had to check them for being lazy. Now, he had to correct them because in 1 Thessalonians, he talked about the day of the Lord. He was really talking about the rapture. That we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. So comfort one another with these words. They took that to mean that Jesus is coming back right away. So I ain't got to do nothing. I'm just going to sit down. Sit down, sir. And rest a little while. <laughs> I'm just going to sit down. And Paul got word that they sitting ain't working. He said, no, 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 no. You're going to be caught up to meet them in the air, but the day of the Lord is coming during the revelation period. You see what I'm saying? He said, that's for unbelievers. Believers are going to be caught up to meet them in the rapture. The word rapture is not in there, but called up to meet them is in 1 Thessalonians. And he says, the believers are already going to be taken care of. It's the unbelievers that are going to have to see God in the day of the Lord. He said, but the bottom line is, don't be sitting idle because we got work to do. Yeah. Say work to do. Yeah. Right here, Renee, I put this in my notes that there's a book called H, look, write this down. His name is H. Richard Niebuhr, N-I-E-B-U-H-R. I told you Tom Brady retired, but I'm still throwing. I'm still throwing. And when I saw DJ, DJ is six foot six receiver. The professor said, now, DJ, here at West Middle School, we got 6'11 boys, 6'10 boys, 6'8 boys. You 6'6. Six, six. So you're going to do better on the football team. You're going to be on the basketball team, but you'll stand out on the football team. And so he taught DJ to play football. And one thing I like about DJ is the receivers are like, the, or, or defensive backs are probably like 5'7, um, 5'8, five, 5'10. Five, five, and so he's 6'6. Six, six. So when the ball is thrown anywhere his direction, he just goes up and gets it. Y'all know where I'm going. If God is throwing a nugget anywhere in your direction, you better go up and get it. 
Because if it hits your hand, you better bring it home. <laughs> H. Richard Niebuhr, write that down. He has a brother named Reinhold Niebuhr, all right? H. Richard has a book called Christ and Culture, which means Christ is not above the culture. He has five views. Christ can be above the culture. He can be outside the culture. He can be, you know, he has different views. But the one I like is that Christ is in the culture. Christ is in the culture to transform the culture. That's why I talked this morning. He's a radical Christ birthing a radical church. John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and, you know, word was God. You know, it's, it's establishing that Jesus is God. But then it says in verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. So to me, that verse is stating that Jesus wrapped himself in flesh and dwelt amongst us so we could behold his grace, his glory, full of grace and truth. So we don't worship a God who's up in heaven looking down on you. No, no, we worship a God that came down to us lived amongst us, died for us. And when he ascended to the right hand of his father, he sent the Holy Ghost to dwell in us. So if you got power of God living in you, then you ought to be like God everywhere you go. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and bring glory to the Father. You are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing but to be cast out under the foot of men. You better be salt and light. So the church is not a building. The church is a believer. Boy, I just said something. You better put that on a t-shirt because when you at Longwood and they say earth to earth, I mean, excuse me, they say you on hospice and you ain't got but one more week to live. This building at 800 Avenue C ain't going to go down to Longwood and come see about you. But a baptized, born again, five baptized, believer in Jesus Christ, we got a mind to run on, will come down and say he was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. But the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with his stripes, you are healed. A believer will come down there every day and say, This sickness is not unto death, but unto the glory of God. Lazarus, Shaniqua, Coquisha, come forth in Jesus' name. So you got to be a believer of God that's used by God. Be light in darkness and salt in situation and need some flavor of the good news of Jesus Christ. Young people, I grew up in the country and we had something called salt house. Salt house. In the country, after they, after the hall, I tell you, grandma always said at breakfast, she said, Now, baby, sit around. And the chickens made donations around here and brought some eggs. He said, but the hog didn't make a donation. He made a sacrifice. There's a difference between a donation and a sacrifice. He died so you can live. Kick out of my head. Hog made a sacrifice. I said, so what are we going to do after the hog made a sacrifice? She said, we're going to take the meat and we're going to put it in the salt house. So when I opened up the little shack, see the, see the meat that's hanging there, it's got salt all around it. Salt all around it because the salt preserves the meat and keeps it right. You are the salt of the earth. You got to preserve God's blessings all around you. They cussing, they fussing, but you got to tell them you are created in the image and light of God. Death and life and the power of the tongue. You better preserve them with the good news. Preserve them. Preserve them. Salt also penetrates the meat. Penetrates. Jordan, when you go get some fries, Chick-fil-A, ketchup, huh, your money right, go to Chick-fil-A. Yes, sir, they give you points and free fries every now and then. Tell them you want fresh fries, fresh fries, and then put some salt on them after fresh fries. See, see that, that salt penetrates the potato and gives it flavor. 
Help me, somebody. You as a child of God needs to be fresh in hot situations. You penetrated with the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, I know they said something about you. They talked about your mama. They crucified Jesus. But don't you slay me yet when I trust them because I ain't living for you. I'm living for him to say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Even me. Salt preserves. Salt penetrates. And as a church, you got to preserve and penetrate the world with Jesus Christ. Because you're light and darkness. And you're salt. Reverend Shelburne says you got to be a salty saint. <laughs> a salty saint. Let me illustrate right quick. I, 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 when I first came to Florida, I, I, I tried to do ministry in collaboration. Because I learned early on that you can't do ministry in isolation, but you got to do it in collaboration. Because isolation means that you take one finger and you're going to point out. I see you saying that. I'm pointing it out. But collaboration is you put your fingers together and you punch it out. And I got tired of pointing out sin. I tried to punch out sin. <laughs> In Fort Lauderdale, there are about four historic black churches. You know, historically African ministry, whatever you want to call it. Um, you got Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church. You got Mount Hermon AME. You got Mount Bethel um, Baptist Church. And you got um, First Baptist Church, Piney Grove. At one point, we were all on the Cistrunk Corridor. Cistrunk is named after James Cistrunk, the first black physician of Broward County. So, so all those historic churches right there. So I discovered that if I was trying to do ministry for kids, families, or whomever, it's best to talk to all those churches in the corridor and let's do it together. Because we all serving for Jesus. I don't care what name you put on the outside. There's only one blood on the inside. <laughs> Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. I'm going to get back to that one. But let me tell you this one. Every 1st and 15th, they say Mount Island didn't say Coral Ridge. <laughs> Gabe, they missed that. Gabe, they missed that. It say Mount Island and it say Coral Ridge. All scholars know where she got a roof over here. <laughs> Groceries in the pantry. Gas in the tank. It's different names on the church building, but it's the same God shall supply all my need according to his riches, which are in glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah! <laughs> so Mount Olive and Mount Bethel work together for Club 316. I know you say, what, Quam? You always been radical. Yeah, I've been radical. I've been, I, was that, I, I am him. <laughs> the radical guy. Club 316, Christians loving unbelievers. According to John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. So, Dr. Perry, we went to the, um, I think it was called the Courtyard Marriott. And we asked for the ballroom. So we, we secured the venue. We got the food catered or whatever we had to the food. Um, ticket sales. We sold tickets. Yeah, we did. We sold tickets. And we got some good comedians. A guy, back in that day, had small fry. Small fry. She came she, she was good. She, she was doing BET comedy, doing all that type of stuff. And she had one joke on talking about that. that, 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 that let, me, let, me, let me get that one. Let me get that one. Because I don't want nobody. I don't need no emails on small fries jokes. Um, but she had some good Christian jokes. That's what she had. Yeah, she, she had some good Christian jokes. So I brought small fry. And then I also had some um, comedians on the radio. But I sat down and gave them that good eye contact. So we not slipping up on this show. Us, me, us, God. My boss already saying you're going too far. So I don't need you pushing me over. So we're going to pay you. We're going to do what's right. But give me the clean version. They did that. Good show. Packed it out. On the radio. Because down in Broward, I think Hot 105, um, um, Brother Rodney would let you get on there for, you know, um, um, a PSA. You know how we do with Jumpin' Joe, whoever. We do that. And so it was a great crowd. At the end of the show, um, <clears throat> the comedian says, I got one issue with your preacher. I said, what's that? He said, you call this Christians loving unbelievers. 
He says it's not that we don't believe, we don't submit. We believe there is a God, but we're not willing to submit to God. That's a nugget. He was bold enough to say it, Renee. We do it, but don't say it. I want to be saved so I can go to heaven, but I don't want to be delivered to live like him on earth. Think about it. We want to be saved so we can go to heaven, but we don't want him to take away our proclivities to sin while we're on earth. And when he does take it away, it's because we don't have no money to do it no more or we don't have the health to do it no more. If I could be real, because you know how we testify, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. That's because you ain't got the money to do it no more. You don't know how to get on Instagram or all that. It's changed now. <laughs> Let me leave that right where it is. So I said that, well, I understand that people are not submitting. I said, but last time I checked in the country, you can't clean fish if you don't catch fish. My job is to get a crowd and allow the Holy Spirit to convert them to Christ. And if you're saying that you can bring a horse to water but you can't make him drink, my professor said you can put salt in his mouth and make him thirsty. And so that's what I did. I, I made them thirsty for what God had to offer because I showed shared the gospel in the midst of a comedy show. I said, you laughing now, but one of these days the joke going to be over. Do you know Jesus as Savior and Lord? Because you laughing now, but one of these days the joke is going to be over. And if you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, you going to H E W L. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? We were in a comedy show, but I sure had to turn the corner and say, one of these days, you ain't going to be no more laughing. Ain't going to be no more playing. And ain't going to be no more whining and dining. And you're going to have to meet your maker face to face. And you ain't going to have no time to be talking about, I'm unsubmissive. You better be saved. <laughs> Can I get an amen in here? So Paul says, you got to answer the call of God. Complete your assignment. And understand that everything you do is going to be counted to be worthy. I'm out of here on this one. I gave Skylar something in her hand. I need every kid to stand up. Hopefully I got something. Y'all stand up. And walk down front. Fellas, y'all y'all be y'all y'all be my armor bearer. All right, come on down, kids. I was leaving the game last night. And when I left the game, a student was standing there, me and Skylar trying to find the bus. Just line up. And she said this Preacher, what is God saying after this? David shivering, I'm shivering. But she says, what is God saying after this? And she was serious. She says, we came to play one team, the opponent. But we had to play two, the opponent and the rest. I said, you right. Because they started giving us penalty just because the guy hit them and said, I got you. Taunted them. All kind of flags on the floor. And we lost by one touchdown. Rain delays. I said, we're in Christian school, but it was a lot of stuff that was said was not Christian. <laughs> I mean, I just took keep it real. And the girl says, I want you to preach on that when you get back to school. That sometimes you go to fight and the enemy double teams you. But you can't lose who you are. You got to keep on fighting. Because there's going to be another battle to win. She 
says, I want you to tell the students like you told us when somebody asked you for a pencil. And you said, young man, when you see this in your hand, hold up your pencil, young man. They got pencils in their hand. And they look brand new. And I said, students, you walking around here looking brand new. But you still in the box. Huh? Scholar, stand up with your pencil. She got a big old pencil. I said, where did you get this one from? Stand up, show them that big old pencil. What is the difference between your pencil and all these other pencils? It's fatter. And the eraser is bigger, yeah. It's sharpened. I told the students, don't walk around looking brand new, but you ain't got no points. You need to be a pencil in the hand of God that he can use to use your life story to bring him glory. But if you're still in the box, he can't use you because you ain't got no points. And when your pencil gets short, I've seen students do this. Saw, saw some students do this. They can't use it no more, Gabe, but all they use it for is an eraser. Sometimes when you get to the end of your life and you ain't got nothing else to say, you can help God erase some stuff, clean some stuff up. Because you know what God did for you, so you're going to go and help somebody else clean up the mess in their life. I see the direction you're going. You better watch out because it looks like this right now, but it's going to be this later. I'm going to clean up some mess in your life. She says, come back next week. But we was hurting right now. Preacher, we're going to need a word after this. I heard God say, your assignment, your call is not just on Sunday mornings. But everywhere you go, you got to be ready to give somebody a word. Because they're hurting. And they need hope, help, and healing and hurting humanity. Everybody standing. I don't know where you are right now, but don't be a pencil without a point. Make sure that when your point gets dull, you got a sharpener. And that sharpener is worship. That sharpener is the word. That sharpener is us keeping us accountable because we sure know how to keep one another accountable around here. We ain't afraid of that. We got that on lock. <laughs> but it helps us to have a sharp point, Sister Jana. Because if you don't have a sharp point, you can't be used by God to write your story to give Him glory. The door of Lord's house is open for you and I. Knowing Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He will pick you up turn and turn your life, life around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Got to get to know him. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Get to know him. When, 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 when? Right now. Today. Today. Just come. There's nothing better knowing Jesus than knowing Jesus. He gets sweeter as the one? day goes by. You've been living your life. You ought to know him. Looking good, driving good. Get to know him. But on deep down on the inside, you know you're not up to no good. Right now, this is your opportunity today, to bring come. your life to God so that God can sharpen There's you into the image of Jesus Christ. But you got to not just believe, you got to submit. Jesus. You got to surrender your life, your will unto him he will because he's you able up and turn to turn your, your life around. all around. But you got to get to know him. You ought to know him. Know him 
as Savior. Get to know him. And after the Holy Ghost gets a part of you, you're going to know him as Lord. Right now. Today. Today. Just come. I hear you saying, I got a job, I got a car, but it's your soul has no place to go. Come on, You're a homeless come Christian. On, come on, and I'm asking you, I'm pleading come with you, I'm begging you on, to make a decision on, for Jesus Christ. He says, right seek first now, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, come. and all these things will be added unto you. Come to Jesus. Come on, come on. Come Bible on. believing, Bible teaching, come Bible on, practicing come church. On, come we on. are a family in God. Right now. And I'm here to Today, tell you that we love one another just come. as Christ loved us. Christ forgave us, therefore we're going to forgive one another. Better. Is there one? Knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but he by me. you got to come to Jesus. You up turn. turn your life around. Get to know him. You ought to know him. Yeah, Lord. Get to know him. When, 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 when? Right now, today, just come. Amen. As always, none have come, but you hear my heart. There's always room for you and I at the cross. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise to these young people. <laughs> young people, y'all hear me very clearly. Don't think I brought you up here just for a rev to close out a sermon with an illustration. I want you to know God wants you to have a point. Some of them pencils look glittery and pretty, but that ain't the point. Some of them look standard, but that ain't the point. The point is that they're sharpened and that they're used. If I got an A on my test, it don't matter what kind of pencil I have. For you to get an A for God, God don't care about what you look like. He just wants to be able to say, you surrendered your life into his hand. And when you in his hand, he can use you for his glory. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So make sure you leave this place and say, Rev gave me an object lesson. That's what they call it in school. That you can teach the gospel of Jesus Christ with a pencil. And you can tell people to say, no longer will you walk around fronting and showboating and doing all this foolishness, but you ain't got no point. Tell them just like that. I give you authority to be radical just like that. You ain't got no point. You, you, you coming to school to look good, but you ain't got nothing in your head because you ain't got no point. Tell them. And then, then say, my pastor say, I'd rather, I rather us fall out on earth, but we friends in heaven. Tell them. And tell them that I got a pencil sharpener for you. It didn't come from the store. It came from the word of God. In him we live and move and have our very being. When you get in Jesus, he'll give you a point. And when you have Jesus in your life, he'll sharpen you. And give you the Holy Ghost to keep you sharp. Even when you get dull. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And tell them that you got a group of believers that will help them with their journey with God. A place that they can belong to, that's called the church. A place that will help them believe, that's called the word of God. A place where they can become like Jesus Christ, that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. You hear what I'm saying? Belong, believe, and become what God has called us to be. Amen? I have ordained all of you to go out there with a pencil sermon to tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. Come on, let's give God praise. Yeah, Lord. The preacher's job is to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. The one thing I learned, Jerry, on that bus was it was a lot of foolishness talking on that bus. But I remember I was daddy and not the teacher. Boy, I heard so much foolishness on that bus. I'm going to have to pray some more. Because these little kids been fooling me. Thought they were angels. But no, not that. They talk about some serious stuff. 
that I can't even say on the broadcast on a church a, a, at a, a Christian school bus. And I'm telling you for real, for real. All right? So we better be on our A game because we got to make disciples for real. Ain't enough to get a scholarship to a school. Ain't enough for you to say, I'm a member of a church. You better make sure they know Jesus. And the Lord is working in their life. For real. Are y'all hearing me? What I'm saying, no, let me leave that. I'm still old school that when I take a scholar out, they be like, I didn't say that. No, me and her got a history. She ain't out my hand. what's going to be. That's what's going to be. Amen. All right. You got any announcements for a raise? Y'all feel me? What we got? Good afternoon, everybody. We got a treat in the back. We got chicken dinners to sell. Listen, don't go out and buy anything. Don't go to Golden Corral. <laughs> we got chicken plates in the back. Mac and cheese. Collard greens. Corn souffle, carrot souffle, pound cake, cornbread. Come on back, twelve dollars. Come on to the back. Yeah, come on to the back. Yeah, Kathy, that was a walk off. That was a walk off. Sister Bertha, I want to do happy birthday. I know we did it do Sunday school, but I want to. I gotta. I want to do it again because this is church. This is this is church. Uh, we had two, from my understanding, uh, Brother Robinson. Come on, let's give God praise. Deacon Gillum. Brother Moore, you had a birthday? Amen. Brother Moore? Nixon? Whoa, look at the birthday bud. Sister Dejard? Whoa! 21? 21? 21? This seasoning, 5-0, not 21. No, all these years are felt. Oh, yes. Five oh. Deacon Gillum says seven five. Josh, what about you? You got a birthday, Josh? What you come on, Josh? Uh, 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 hey, uh, on Wednesday, uh, hey, I'll be 37. Uh, hey, hey. Don't do this. <laughs> 56. Oh, let's give God praise. 56, Brother Robinson. Brother Robinson. 69. 69. He got one more. I turned 75, and I'm happy to have it, too. Uh, I turned 66 last Saturday, and my daughter got married last Sunday, and I'm going to have my first grandbaby in December. 69 next Wednesday. 69. 69. Oh, my Lord. My Lord. 13. 13. Pastor said, ain't no kid no more. I'm a teenager. Amen. Sister Bertha, hit it. Facebook family, YouTube family, this the kind of church you want to be a part of. You get a birthday shout out, birthday song, chicken dinner in the back. You get Jesus with some flavor. Thank you, Jesus. Happy amen, amen. Woo! I feel better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. Yeah, yeah.
Thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, I thank you for this worship experience. This was worship. God and I walked in the door. I said, it's worship time. Didn't feel so worshipy. I had on my khakis and my polo. I had to go upstairs and put on my uniform. So, Skylar, I need you to put on your uniform. Sweatpants ain't going to do this one today. We got work to do. I don't want to go to a doctor and just see him walking in in basketball shorts, slides, tank top, talking about how many help you. No. I need you to have that white jacket on. I need you to be ready. I came with the word today. I came with a text of scripture that we normally don't even talk about. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, 12. But I knew you said the saints need to be prayed for. And saints need to know this, what God expects of all of us. You gave me some real life illustrations about how we are to share the gospel today. And you gave me my closing with a young girl who got my attention on the way out. Said, I need you to preach about this. Sometimes your greatest sermons come from your greatest pain. Prof told me, grass does not grow on the tops of mountains, but it grows in the valley. So sometimes at your lowest moments is where you grow in God. So, Lord, I thank you for this worship experience, and I thank you for what you've done for me. Because I tell my friends at that school already, I said, the church is what I love to do. This teaching is what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> Mom and dad have made it clear than clear that we retired for a reason, and we're trying to live our good life. But we need you to stand on your own two feet. You know, Paul can be a tent maker and a theologian. But Jesus was the carpenter and the Christ. Then surely Pastor Austin can be pastor today. A school student say sub or teacher or prof tomorrow. And so Lord, help us, oh God, to make full proof of the ministries you place through our hands. Because when I look at Paul, Paul taught the gospel as a prisoner and as a pioneer, and as a preacher. He had different roles, but he had one goal, give God the glory. So God, help us, oh God, to submit and surrender to whatever the Holy Spirit has called us to do. Because Dr. Perry, I discovered he's not going to call us by our title, but he's going to look for us by our testimony. And our testimony is well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, but now I'm going to make you rule over many in and out to the joy of the Lord. So now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. May he rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and evermore. Let your heart say. That's for the Father. That's for the Son. That's. For the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your heart say amen. amen. Praise God. All right, let's make our way to the fellowship hall next Sunday. I mean, excuse me, right, excuse me. No, no, no. We got two things to do. We got to pass out our turkeys across the street. Okay, we got to do that. That's our ministry assignment. Next Saturday, we're going to pass them out on Juanita. Okay, uh, turkeys and bags of groceries across the street. And then next Saturday, we're going to Juanita from 9 30 to 12. And then tomorrow is Monday Manor. So meet me here for Monday Manor. We're going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 through 5. All right. Take care. God bless.